is not fun? Well, I, Makwela Mamraka, is here to show you that maths is just a fun challenge. It is as easy as y equals to mx plus c. And for those of you who didn't know, it is as easy as a straight line. So right now, it is the time for you to grab a paper, a pen, and a calculator and come learn maths with me. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Learn Maths with me on a hashtag Maths Tuesday. In today's episode of Learn Maths with me, we will be doing factorization by grouping. Oh yes, we are introducing another type of factorization. So in the previous videos, you saw how we factorize using difference of two squares, factorize using trinomials, type 1, type 2, type 3, name them all. So today we are doing a different kind of factorization, which is by grouping so this mainly takes place when we have polynomials polynomials are polynomial rather is when like we have more than three terms so we know that when it's one term it is called a monomial when it's two terms it's called a binomial when it's three terms it's called a trinomial so when it's more than three terms it's called a polynomial so today we'll be factorizing polynomials particularly with four terms so without wasting any time let's get into it so the idea of grouping grouping is generally used to factorize an expression with more than three terms as i've said it is used to factorize polynomials so the idea of grouping or behind grouping is to group terms together when we group terms together it means that like we'll factorize them by setting them apart or grouping them maybe in into twos so in this video we'll be grouping them in two twos so the idea of grouping or behind grouping is to group terms together and then if possible take out a highest common factor you know how we take out the highest common factor of numbers and the highest common factor of the highest common factor of variables so remember that when we are taking out the highest common factor of variables it is the least exponent which is the highest common factor so if a term has to the has x to the exponent 2 and another term has x to the exponent 3 so what is the what is the term with the least exponent the term with the least exponent is the one with the exponent 2 which means that x to the exponent 2 will, will be our highest common factor <laughs> so if possible take out the highest common factor in order to obtain a common bracket get that this definition can be a little bit complicated so do not be scared i'm just gonna take my question or the first question which i'm going to be showing you with and i would advise you to pause the video and do the rest of the questions alone so right now i'm just gonna take the question and just apply this definition of factorization by grouping and then just show you how we factorize a polynomial particularly with four terms so guys as you can see here let's first start with this it's the same question but then we are grouping different terms so when the condition of grouping is to group terms that have like terms or that have something in common so as you can see we have uh, my plus 5ny plus mx plus 5nx and in this case we have grouped together my plus 5ny together and then positive mx plus 5 and x together why because these two terms have something in common what is in common y is in common in these two terms and again in these two terms what is in common x is in common so what does the condition of grouping say here the idea of, of of grouping or behind grouping is to group terms together we have already grouped our terms together and then if possible take out the highest common factor in order to obtain a common fraction so what we have to do second is to take out the highest common factor so we are going to first deal with these two terms that we have paired together what is the highest common factor the highest common factor is there an m in the second term no there is no m meaning that we cannot take it take it out as the highest common factor uh, same applies to this side there's no five and there's the, there's no n this side so what is common what is common is y is it the is it the least exponent yes it is the least exponent so after we've taken out the highest common factor we're just going to open the bracket after we've opened the bracket, we're going to write down what is left after we took out the y. Sorry. We're going to write down what is left after after we took out the y. So after we took out the y, 
we we're going to say m y divide by y what is left it's only m and then our positive sign and then what is left to this side we're going to be left with 5 and y because this n has been taken out of the bracket so we're going to move on to the second two terms the second pair rather and then when we're looking at this what is in common what is in common is x so this x is positive x and then we're going to open the bracket but in the bracket we write down what is left after we took out the x so what is left in the first term what is left is m positive sign and then in the second term what is left is 5n close bracket so as you can see we're going to look at the last part of the explanation they say take out the highest common factor we took out the highest common factor in the first two terms the highest common factor was y in the second two terms the highest common factor was x and then what do they say again in order they say if you take out the highest common factor you are capable you're capable of obtaining a common a common bracket so before we we work on this statement you can see that now you have two terms why do i say you have two terms because they are they are separated by a positive sign so please don't say that you have like <laughs> more than two terms or four terms <laughs> so yeah just note that like whenever this terms this term is in in a in a bracket it is referred as one and when it is there is another term close to it not separated by an addition sign or a negative sign this is referred as one term so same applies to the second term so as you can see here we have only two terms why because they are separated by a positive sign so they say after you took out the highest common factor you are capable of um obtaining a common factor a common bracket rather so when you look at these two terms what is in what is common in these two terms what is common is this bracket you can see that in this first term you have a bracket m plus 5n and in the second term you have a bracket m plus 5n so as you can see you have something common in these two terms so what you're going to do is take it out take out what is common in these two terms which is m plus 5n so we are going to open another bracket what is left after you took out this common factor what is left you are left with your y and then in this second term what is left after you took out this this common factor your positive x so you have factorized by using grouping by using the method of grouping rather so if you want to take this 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 factorized form back to the expanded form you can do that by using the method of distributive property <laughs> so as you can see here it's still the same question but you can group together different terms so you have you have this expression right it's the same as this one but you can see that my has a like term to this to this mx which is m so you can group together this my plus mx so to make things easier for you you have to write them close to each other it's really not necessary to write them close to each other but to make everything more understandable we're just going to write them close to each other so in this first term in this first uh, example you have grouped together these two now you are grouping my with mx do you see the difference so it is your choice to choose which ones you group together as long as they have a as long as they have a common a, they have something in common i really hope that you understand that and then you're good in this in this in this example again you're going to group 5ny with 5nx Five and y plus five and x. Why? Because they also have something in common. So you do if you don't want to group this ones like this, you can group them in this way again. So what is common into these two terms? What is common in them? It is m. Or what is the highest common factor? The highest common factor is m. So as you know, you're going to open your bracket. What is left after you took out the m? 
it's y and this side what is left after you took out the m it's x and then the second the second pair what is what is common in this two in this two terms what is the highest common factor in these two terms the highest common factor is positive 5n you're going to open your bracket what is left after you took out the 5n what is left is y and then again you put down your positive sign what is left after you took out the 5n it's x so as you can see you have taken out the highest common factor in each and every pair so now what so now you are left with two terms so you're going to check your two terms what is common in these two terms in this term and this term do you have something that is common yes you do have something that is common what is that something the something is the bracket the, these two terms both have the bracket y plus x so you're just going to take it out take out the bracket y plus x and then open another bracket what is left in this first term after you took out the y plus x what is left is m and then in the second bracket what is left after you took out the y plus x it's 5n so you see you have factorized by using the method of grouping as you can see these two answers are the same so no matter how you group you group your terms you are still going to get the same answer just remember that they have to have something in common i really hope that you understand that so i'm just going to take questions a few questions which are just two <laughs> because this is just an easy method of factorizing so i really hope that you are able to understand it clearly so i'm just going to take the questions and yeah we're going to get straight into answering them without wasting any time let's go so guys here are my two questions so before i do them with you please pause the video if you are <laughs> comfortable with doing that like please pause the video and then maybe try these two questions alone to see if you really understand the method of factorization by grouping and yeah so i'm just gonna continue doing them and then yeah let's start with the first one so you should realize that this kind of factorizations will will always repeat themselves like factorization by difference of two squares factorization of trinomials so in this first questions in this first question you can see okay that you have a polynomial a polynomial <laughs> we know that we, like we factorize polynomials by grouping but before you can start by saying okay let me group my pairs you can firstly see that these two pairs these two terms rather as a pair they can be factorized as difference of two squares so before you can say let me factorize them using the method of grouping you have to first check if there are any other kinds of factorization that you can use so as you can see this first two terms you, they can be factorized as difference of two squares why because these two terms are all squared are all to the exponent two and you have a negative sign in between so we're just going to factorize them by using difference of two squares before we can move forward and say that we are factorizing by grouping so as we know difference of two squares we're going to have x y we're going to have the terms without the exponents x y and in these two brackets we're going to have opposite signs in the first bracket we may have a negative sign and then in the second bracket we may have a positive sign i really hope that you understand this if you don't understand factorization by difference of two squares please do check out my video <laughs> so yeah my video that i did on difference of two squares so guys we're just going to put down the second term second term x plus y so as you can see now uh we can just group this uh we can just call this a pair <laughs> so as you can see we have factorized this by difference of two squares so as you can see we can factorize this by by just taking out the common factor which is just one <laughs> so i'm just gonna write this down x minus y 
x plus y since we have grouped we have paired this together we have we also need to pair this two together so this ones we have paired together and we have factorized them by difference of two squares so as we pair this together we have to find what is common in them the what is common in them is the invisible coefficient which is one so we're just going to take it out of the bracket and then write what is left after we took it out why so right now you can see that you have two terms how do you know that you have two terms you know that you have two terms because there is a positive sign separating them you cannot call this one term and one term why because they are not separated by a positive sign or a negative sign. They are separated by a multiplication sign. So those brackets, when they are close to each other like this, they just mean that this they need to multiply each other. So when you're looking at these two terms, what do you have in common? What is common in these two terms? What is common is the bracket x plus y and x plus y so you can see that in in both these two terms the bracket x plus y is present so you're just going to take out what is common in these two brackets x plus y <laughs> and then open another bracket what is left in the first term after you took out x plus y what is left is the bracket x minus y and what is left in the second bracket after you took out the bracket x plus y it is positive one so you can just write it down with all the bracket x plus y x minus y plus one so i really hope that you understand how we did that so it is truly really important to check to check before you factorize before you go straight to your answer if there is any other method that you can use to get to the answer like we used the method of factorization by difference of two squares so without wasting any time let's go to the second question so right now as you can see it when you're looking at it you can see that i can group these two terms together why because they have something in common 10 and 5 has a highest common factor which is 5 and then we also have the common something in common which is x and then in these two terms we can group them together so let me just highlight the ones i'm grouping together and this ones we are also grouping together because they have something in common 6 and 3 have the common high and highest common factor which is 3 and then y they have something in common again which is a variable y and y so let's first start with these two terms what is the highest common factor between 10 and 5 it is 5 how did we find that we went and said factors of 10 Factors of 5, H, C, F. So I really hope you understand what I am doing here. So what are factors? Factors are numbers that can go into that number or divide into that number without leaving a remainder. So what are the numbers that can go straight into 10 without leaving a remainder? It's 1, it's 2 it's 5 and it's 10 and then what are numbers that can go that can divide into 5 without leaving a remainder it's 1 and it's 5 so you can see that 5 is a prime number what is a prime number a prime number is a number that like that's divisible by one and itself that can be divided by one and itself only so what is the highest common factor we can see that one is common in both the factors and five is common but which one is the highest the highest is five so that's why i said the highest common factor between 10 and 5 is five so how do we recognize the highest common factor between variable as i've said in the previous video that in the previous videos that uh, in variables you do not stress yourself but the you identify the highest common factor by the leader the variable with the least exponent so which variable which variable x here has the least exponent is the one in the second term which is just 
x why do i say we take the the one with the least exponent okay as you can see here we have two x's and then here we have one x so what which how many x's are common in these two terms only one x is common so that's why i say the one with the least exponent is your highest common factor so you're going to open the bracket what is left after you took out 5x 10 divided by 5 you're left with 2x squared divided by x you're left with x you should note that like when variables are dividing each other you keep the base and you minus the exponents so you kept your base 2 minus exponent 1 it's x which is x to the exponent 1 so what is left in the second term positive your positive sign and then 5 divided by 5 it's 1 you can just leave it out <laughs> or you can write it down let's just write it down and then x divided by x it's nothing and then y does it have something to divide with nope you're just going to keep it so if you just wrote y only we would have known that there is a coefficient one in front so there's it is really not necessary to show the coefficient one so let's close our bracket and then let's factorize the second terms so you're just going to use the same method as this to find the highest common factor between six and three which is we have we have common variables again what is the highest common factor of variables which are common which is y the highest common factor is the one with the least exponent which is y to the exponent one and then you're going to open your bracket what is left after you took out three y six divided by three is two you don't have x to divide with another x it's just you're just going to put on your x and then y divided by y is going to give us zero and then not literally zero because this is another law of exponent when 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 i get when you're dividing when you're dividing you have exponent one and exponent one so i'm teaching you another law of exponent so when you're dividing when you're dividing uh variables of the same base you keep the base then you minus the exponent then equals to y to the exponent zero so when you when 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 any number or any variables is to the exponent zero is going to be equals to one so i'm just not showing the one here because 2x times one is just going to give us 2x i really hope you understand that and then put our positive sign we're going to write down what is left after we took out 3y 3 divided by 3 it's 1 y squared divided by y it's y to the exponent 1 close bracket so you're going to look at your two terms what is common in these two terms you, you can see that we have a common bracket which is 2x plus y and then in the second term we have that common bracket which is 2x plus y so we're just going to take out that common bracket close bracket and then open another bracket write down what is left from the first term after you took out the bracket 2x plus y plus 1y you're left with 5x and in the second term you're left with 3y so you're going to close your bracket as you can see we have factorized by grouping so somebody else could have could have grouped 10x squared with 6y 6xy why because they have a highest common factor which is 2 and they have a common variable and grouped again 5xy and 3y squared why uh, because they have a common variable so you would have used the same method and then your answer would have just led you to the same brackets so i really hope that you find this video helpful please stay tuned for more amazing maths tuesdays i really hope that you leave a like comment some encouraging words and you subscribe stay tuned for another hashtag maths tuesday see you next week If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell me in the comment sections which, which topic you'd like me to cover. And remember, I do not promise to know everything, but I do promise to share and help where I can.